Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Misfit Happy Hour. It is July 20th. It's 421. Today, we've had another march up um, the, to the bear chagrin, and uh, we're all getting together this afternoon to kind of knock the ball around and, and just, you know, test out. How should we say it? we're going to test out a few of our favorite diagnoses of what happened today. And so I'm joined by my good friend, David, and his friend, Reed. And uh, we will try and not um, pollute anybody's bias with our own bias, but excuse us if we if we travel down a few rabbit holes of, of uh, you know, like, oh, we've seen this before or, or uh, deja vu. David, you ever seen deja vu in the market? Um, yeah, all, all the time, man. Right. It's how like about a, you? It's how, like a dream. How, right. How about you, Reed? Ever seen deja vu? Ever stuff happen again? I haven't been in it uh, too long, but the answer is yes, definitely. And those are actually some of the best moments. So. Right. Like, you know, we used to know a guy named Tra uh, Tommy Trainer was a huge trader in the pit. And he would always say the the hair on my arm stands up is worth more than a Nobel Prize. <laughs> so, so, David, did you survive the 4th of July fist up your butt with your shorts? Oh, uh, July 4th. No, I was out of the country, actually. I was in Colombia. Oh, good. Oh, good. Remember, yeah. we had we had spoken and I was like, you know, it, you have to. Oh, yeah. yeah. You mentioned you mentioned that. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I so passed we, it along to to the people I chat with, uh, you know, and they all watched the episode, too. So they should have known. Yeah, Reed, yeah, we were we were talking about it before the 4th of July and we weren't sure how it was going to play out. And And, and so. I just mentioned, you know, hey, there's this tendency before a patriotic holiday that to, you know, circle the wagons and, and the stocks go with it. And so just so for your own knowledge, everybody watching and for and hopefully read um, in the future, right? Always right before Thanksgiving, right? Before Thanksgiving, be careful. Before Christmas, be careful. Yeah. Right. They, Especially on the short side, because the shorts get it's it's harder to play because it's like a Friday on steroids because no one wants to hold it that long. Right. And the kids, right. The kids are left in charge of the cookie jar. Yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. And so that um, anyway, um, so for everybody, uh, we have had Tesla's earnings. We're not exactly sure what they were. The stocks are lower currently 3956. If you're watching this at a later time, we've had a big bounce uh, with marginal structure off the low. Um, of course, um, David and and Reed, my most recent thinking is is that everybody's biases, right? Like they've bought every dip for the last twenty years and gotten rich, right? And and nobody can trade because of high frequency or the. Do you see how? Did you see that sell off today? How they just rolled over out of nowhere? Yeah, you know, it's it's not the same market as before, man. Uh, when you when I walk down the street or I grab an Uber or something, it's uh, you don't hear buy the dip, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear the kumbaya moments anymore of, of buying dips. Right. Bitcoin right now, did, have you did you see the Bitcoin chart right now? It just dumped into like really nasty. Oh, it did. So, yeah, it was rallying and then like all day long and all night long, and then it just like took a huge hit. Um, and you're saying Tesla did too? I haven't looked at Tesla. No, I haven't looked at the test. I'm just looking at the futures. They're 39.57. I mean, it's not like the, I mean, anyway, today for people who, who aren't familiar or watching it at a later time, uh, this morning someone came and bought them hard off the opening, um, kind of out of out of place, sort of. Uh, you could suspect he they either had a lot to buy and they needed to bury some people or they just had a lot of cash and they needed to spend it and so they ran them pretty hard like 40 handles and then typically with this one of these jam and sit jobs they just jam them higher and then they sit there for as long as three days if it's a big jam and sit and then um but they just fell out of bed which to, uh later in the day and uh, of course uh, which was surprising and kind of a tell. And in regards to the top of book, right, for people who are who are familiar with the, the amount sitting on the top of the deck in the S&P, uh, I saw a tweet by Zero Hedge saying that there's only 3 million. You can only hit the bid for 3 million if you need to hit the bid. Um, how liquid is the biotechs, you guys? You guys are, are they, uh, Reed, what are you trading? Um, so I just, anything that's up, 20% or more pretty much, but I'm a uh, <laughs> small, cap, 
small cap, yeah. short seller, you know, 75% of my profits are foreign companies, mainly Chinese, uh, just a few, um, just a few basic strategies for the most part. I, I do want to say one thing though, it's kind of funny because bringing it back to earlier, uh, last weekend I was at the casino Saturday night and it was, uh, like nine, 10, 11 PM. And I go there and I'm bringing my cousin from Canada and he's younger. He's never been to a casino. And I'm like, yeah, this is a pretty good one. It gets pretty rowdy and everything. And, we go there. It's been a while. There is nobody there. Nobody at the casino. All of the stimmy money has gone. It was a perfect example to me of like recently how I've seen the trend of the markets throughout the entire year and how I feel like it's more sharks versus sharks right now rather than sharks taking, you know, eating a bunch of minnows all the time. Um, it's been a little bit more difficult this year, especially with my particular plays. And I haven't been in the market that long, so I've really had to adapt, uh, learn a, a lot, a lot of new things, and have like way more conviction to enter and get into trades. And anyways, I just thought that that was hilarious because um, I, I go to the casino every once in a while, and there has been less and less and less people there every every month. And I just think that that's similar to the markets in some ways. Um, Oh, no, that's a right. That's a great metaphor. David, are you seeing any liquidity in the stuff you trade? Um, you know, it's like Reese said, because we trade very similar as well. Um, it's like shark versus shark. You know, the, the short selling brokers have all raised their borrow fees, have all raised the locates. Uh, you know, it's like every every stock that goes up, like, you know, on air or whatever is getting bombarded with shorts so you're fighting other short sellers and you can tell like when a stock is on ssr short sell restriction it's just really hard to get filled because it's just you're you're shorting into another short seller constantly just right. constantly rotating uh short you know so I and like you. it's shark versus shark it's like short sellers are the more sophisticated players in general so like you're playing against more sophisticated players now you know so it's a little it's a little trickier like reed said you know you got to be way more selective and just uh, the, the criteria you gotta you gotta bump up the criteria to enter a trade up a notch but <laughs> isn't you know, it isn't it it's so weird you guys it's like i mean without getting crazy it's without you know it seems like the world has lost any sort of bounded rationality and and so it's like you say it's shark versus shark what is a shark it's like a psychopathic machine right it's just like what there's there is no sort of professional courtesy it's like if you're wrong in a trade yeah <laughs> yeah I'm sure everybody yeah. out there is laughing too right if you're wrong in a trade sharky uh, shark you know um and, and it's, it's like this is no mercy you know <laughs> yeah so, so right if for everybody who's watching just make sure that you have a uh, time or a price stop and then you I you know what I learned David is is that a response to trauma right so all of a sudden the trade goes bad and so uh, the first response apparently to trauma is a narcissistic response in other words you see someone else get in a car accident and you're like oh that's too bad right the guy you know hits him from behind or something you're like that's too bad but then they hit your car and you're like who the fuck you know like yeah Right. Uh, and so yeah. the trade goes bad. The trade goes bad. And we're like, we get angry. Right. Have you noticed that? Like, yeah, and, um, I, it's happened to me, you know, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Reed, right. As, as Reed's like nodding yeah. too, right. Like it happens to us. Right? <laughs> so the transition from like, oh, you know, how dare they, or, or, you know, can you believe these sharks or, or, you know, that frustration. I mean, Reed, you're, a, I mean, you understand frustration, Reed, you're a golfer. Right. That's the that's the name of the tune there. Right. Frustration. Like. Just one one millimeter, whatever it is off. How can, can you help us with this? Like, how do we get past that initial response? Like, say you've 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 arrived in a frustrating situation and and for David and I say we're in a trade and something goes bad or it's some, you know, they, they like today, this morning, they ran them and all, you know, all sorts of front running and and there's all sorts you know, it's not a level playing field and so how do as a golfer you have to you're facing your own accountability right there in front of you right you got to walk to the bad shot that you just hit how how can david and i get past that initial 
instinct to yell at ourselves or to yell at the screen? Process um, trumps Trump's results. So um, at the beginning of whether you've done the trade or not, and whether you've hit the golf shot or not, um, there's always another golf shot, right? You've got to go hit the next one literally in a couple minutes. There's another trade opportunity um, coming up, you know, right away. And the really, the only thing that you can do, I think in the markets and in general is um, we don't have infinite knowledge. We go through our process. We go through all of our checkpoints. You know, David and I have used to be just two to three. Now it's six, seven, eight, nine. Um, if you go through all of your checkpoints and if it makes sense and you do the trade and going against you, um, you just can't, you know, hang your hat on that. You have to understand that the process is actually uh, what's going to make us a bunch of money in the markets. Because if you stick to that over time, um, you're going to win a lot more than you lose. And any type of an emotional reaction to that is probably not uh, going to yield uh, very good results. So uh, I've always been really, really process oriented and focused on the preparation uh, more than the results, even with golf, um, because there are so many outside factors that can happen. You know, think of golf, right? Um, you've got weather, right? That's big. Uh, one bounce here or there with the, you know, the misfits of the course, all mm -hmm. of that. I mean, you could play a really stellar round of golf and not score very well. You can be on your game trading for a few weeks and really just your plays aren't there. They're not quite working out. Of course, we all have to adapt, but um, you just have to continue to focus on the process. That's it. I guess it is machine-like in a way. I mean, that right. kind of always uh, operated is, you know, here, 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 goals, process, and then um, we're no good if we don't if we don't adapt our process. But I mean, that's kind of what I would Dave, say. I, Dave, I want to hear from David, but I just want to ask you one quick question. How do you diffuse a heated emotional state when you're playing golf? Like David and I will, David's like, I care. The other time, the other, you know, before July 4th, he was like, this is a freaking sport. This is what we do, right? Our life is into this. This is, we're competing against the smartest people in the world. Like we really care. We yeah. want to win and we're here to win. And we, we have continually been tested and survived, but we, we suffer the, the emotional, we, we can certainly get emotionally attached or affected. That's maybe the word I'm looking for. Um, how do you talk yourself down when you're playing golf and you get pissed at yourself? Because you, ha you, have no, you can't get pissed at anybody else, right? Well, it's just, it's all on you. That's why I love the sport. That's why I love crazy. <laughs> but um, you have to have very good self-reflection right away. But this all happens with experience because I already knew from experience and getting mad my entire life from golf that it never did me any good. And I eventually learned to adapt. And, you know, I always... Uh, I used to have a really bad attitude in high school and, uh, and even, you know, maybe the start of college. I and mean, my dad was a professional hockey player and he wrote me this handwritten, I've still got it right up here, this mm -hmm. letter, um, six pages long. And it's all about the word attitude. And uh, he sent me this tape from Earl Nightingale. If anybody types in Earl Nightingale attitude, there's this nice little 20 minute audio clip and it's just, it's the best thing I ever listened to. And honestly, that day forward changed my whole perspective on not just trading or golf or whatever, everything. Just live your life with a really good, positive attitude. Focus on the process. Results aren't always going to be there. Um, and it is what it is. And when you start having that, that mindset, you will still get angry. It's a normal human emotion, but you're able to curb that and channel that and understand what's happening and realize that that's not going to lead you to the promised land. So. That's David, I mean. all yours, David. Oh man, that's so. It's, that's a gem right there. You know, that? so that's a that's a gem. So right. it's just like like your attitude. You know, like the, like with trading, I have countless. I mean, not countless. Probably like twenty audio books on mindset, on positive attitude. Just I was a uh, just today. I uh, I was at the gym right before this, and I was listening to what's it, Minervini um mark minervini mark minervini one of yeah. his like uh success books of like just just being uh successful and, and like uh, you know doing things at a high level it's just a beautiful book and like when you start to like really immerse yourself into all this it's like for me especially like i had a bad attitude a few years ago as well 
I was bitter. I left my architecture career and I, I'm starting from scratch. I'm in so much debt. And I had a bad attitude. And I noticed uh, the guys that are succeeding. And I played sports in the past. I played baseball in college, but that was a long time ago. That's another lifetime ago. And uh, I forgot about all that. But it's easy to, you know, for me, I, I just immersed myself back in. And I was able to clean up all my, you know, just switch up my attitude. Like, okay, is, is my bad attitude is not going to help this uh, trading. And that's trading, you know, there's very few things you can control. And like attitude, you, you, can't, you can't get control of it one way or another. It's, it's, it's on you. It's not the market. You can't control the market, but you can, you know, figure out a way to, to get the attitude in check. And, uh, you know, what's crazy is that w- once, you, once you do that, you start to like Mark Minervini was mentioning in the chapter I just read right now or listened to about the reticular activation system. It's like, even if you're not paying attention, you're going to like, you're going to pick it up because that now you're, you're almost programmed to like att- get attracted to certain things. And, uh, you know, for, for me, it's, it's, it's been that way. You know, I just went to a trading conference this weekend and like, I'm tired and all that. I'm zoned out a little bit, but once certain things get mentioned, some nuggets of information, all of a sudden I'm, 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 I'm like the tire and jet lag, everything is out, you know? So it's just like, switching get, getting your attitude in check and then like compounding good good uh traits and good habits that involve attitude oh man like you know um yeah you know so so like i i run across new traders all the time and i'm like it the first, i mean i don't it's, it's hard to discuss someone's attitude with them you know what i mean i'm i'm not his coach i'm not he does not pay me but i can tell right away this person's attitude needs to get He's to, you know, they need to work on their attitude first before they get into trading. And uh, of, I don't know, it's, it's what I did. Think about, right, the, the understanding that you have confirmation bias, right? And so you think most people, not I'm not suggesting Reed or, or David or myself, uh, which I'm sure we do, we have confirmation bias. And then the Dunning-Kruger thing, right, where 70% of the people think they're the better than average. So <clears throat> in regards to talking to other people, you know, you can't share karma, right? The the idea of that they've gotten there on their own cause and effect, just like we have. But in regards to trading and, and the accumulated trauma that we're, we're dealing with, um, Reed's pretty green. David's got a lot more experience. And so do I. And so, you know, you're, you're, the markets are like playing chess with a psychopath. So we're going to get traumatized because of what we perceive, perceive as non-rational, non-linear, you know, subjective price movements. And so we're like, well, that didn't make sense. And then of course, you're going to, you're going to try and fade something that doesn't make sense. And then you're going to experience trauma because you can't be perfect exactly. in the timing. Right. And then, so then uh, that's to our question that goes to Reed is like, Reed's been playing golf for a long time. Like, like the stress of playing golf at a high level must be similar to the stress of trading at a high level. And so, so Reed, what do you do to, to bleed off the accumulated traumas or stresses of, of the game? You're, you're, you're really bringing me back um, to some of the things that I, I didn't enjoy as much about playing golf at a very <laughs> high level. And I'm just saying, sorry, you know, sorry. because you learn from all of this your entire life, but um, expectations can really doom you. Like, um, and that's why I keep t- yeah, process. I just keep saying that word and it's, it's up here. It's, it's everywhere process because uh, expectations um, can really hurt you. And with golf, uh, that's when I was at my worst. And that's when the stress would just way, way down is when you expected to play well, or you expected this to happen or everything's been going well lately. And, um, you know, this is a great opportunity. And, and why do we see so many people fail, you know, on the final round Sunday when it's their first time at a major and all of that, nothing's different other than the pressure that you're putting on yourself. Uh, um, now with trading, I, what I would say is, the most of the pressure for me comes after a red, day, right? And David and I are very, um, uh, we have high win percentages overall. Red days don't, don't come very often, thankfully, you know? Yeah. Uh, but when you do have a red day or when I have like a bad week of trading, I start to 
you know, that pressure and that expectation that I need to start performing. And I do trade accounts now for others. And um, there's some expectations and stress involved with that as well. So channeling all of that, having no expectations and being blank and just taking in the information from the screens, processing it as quickly as possible and focusing on your process is, is everything. And uh, the other thing is like, uh, there's always, you know, these complicated answers that everybody has to answer these questions and all of that. And, and really at the end of the day, um, um, you can't, you don't make it that complicated. You, you find a process that works and you keep harping on it and that's what you do. And then you try to fix all these things and start all of this new stuff and research this and that. And then you get kind of carried away and you really just have to hone in on a few important things that have worked for you. I mean, essentially, that's what this conversation is all about. I mean, why did we used to get together as a group of traders off the floor and have a beer after work was to shoot the breeze and, and to bleed off some of that trauma, yeah. you know, which is so personal because there's no one else but you experiencing it. Right. So it's almost like we're, we're therapists listening to people who want to kill themselves. And then eventually after a while, we're just like, God, stop with this pain and suffering. But it's all our own personal story that we've got to somehow come to grips with and then get our shit together and show up in the morning and be just like lucid and, and resilient. Again, everybody out there, I'm, I'm, we're, we feel you out there. You need right. to understand yourself. You need to understand who you are, your tendencies, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and how that's going to relate to being down on a trade or being up on a trade. Um, all of you, that. You, you know, Lance, discredited Lance Armstrong, um, said that form is a mysterious thing. You can practice and practice and practice and then be up to your top form and then it mysteriously disappears. Does that happen in golf? Absolutely. Oh, yes, absolutely all the time. And uh, um, golf is a very uh, rhythmic game where technically everything can be sound, but uh, upper body, lower body, um, temperature, so many different things have to be working at the exact same time. Then you have to be in rhythm and in your flow state, which we we'll talk about in trading too. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get out of it just a little bit, and if your mind starts running, you start questioning some things of what you're doing, you start overthinking, and then everything you know, unravels, and you got to find a way to bring yourself back. back. In. What are those two or three things that, are, that you can always hang your hat on and focus on that um, are going to bring you back? And then the thing that you have to remember is like bringing you back into the flow state does not mean that your results are just going to immediately start happening. It just means that you need to bring yourself back to give yourself the opportunity to have good results. Uh, don't be so result oriented all the time. You know? Oh, there's the process element, which is right. So you're not att necessarily attached to the results, but more al aligned with the process and then let the results take the, like you hear the kids when they're walking to the outer courts in the week before the US Open, you know, and they say, what's your strategy? And they just say like, I'm gonna play till I lose right? Stuff like that, right? Where they're just, you know, or yeah, anyway, David, yeah. how do you uh, bleed? How, how do you bleed off stress, David? How do I bleed off stress? You know, it's just, I, you know, it sounds corny, but I, I, <laughs> I go for long walks and here, especially in, in Puerto Rico and in downtown LA, you know, and I listen to some audiobooks. Reed mentioned the flow state. I, there's one, um, one good book that's called the title is flow state i i like or flow i think i think it's flow by flow. yeah he's uh, his, he's got a really long name it's, yeah he's a he's an indian guy I think. yeah or sis really? and something yes i read it years ago it's very good yeah it's it's awesome um but yeah the flow state is important and you know it's just like when i have a red day or when i have a you know a few times this year i didn't have a red day but it was just a, such a frustrating day in general where like, I caught myself at one point, I never do this, but I was yelling on the phone at someone. Right. <laughs> I never do that, but I was just so frustrated. And I was like, okay, I, I gotta, I, I, I'm I, done trading today. This is, my attitude is off. Everything's off. Like, why am I yelling at the phone? Hey, uh, Reed. Someone on the phone. Hey, Reed, can I yell at the screen instead of hitting the mouse? Is that a better <laughs> way to, to bleed off the screen? Like, or bleed off the stress is just be like, I can't believe you guys, who is buying them here? Right kind of thing, right? And and like, is that? I guess that's less harmful than hitting the mouse and making it worse. Yeah, you know, as long as it, it 
everyone's going to understand what works for them. Right. And as long as it's internal and I don't think it's external towards others, why you're mad because they're doing this and all of that, as long as you're channeling your inner self. And if that's your quick reaction, Tiger Woods would always say that his dad would let him have um, five to 10 seconds after a bad shot to do whatever the heck he wanted. And that was it. And then after that, he had to bring that in and move on to the next task. So there's yeah. Right. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you're welcome at happy hour anytime. We need more of this to everybody listening. Please listen. It's yeah. so it's so good. Well, yeah, I, I will have one one uh, night and then I, I got to get back in the morning. I'll, I have a plan to always trade small and build myself back up. Usually it takes me a few trades or a couple of days uh, seeing, you know, just getting through the process, getting back on the tracks once again. Come and, on, David. Know, Come on, David. You're chasing flow state, just like me, just like Reed. We're all just chasing that flow state, right? Yeah, it's like we're absolutely. junkies. We're total junkies for the flow state of being in step with an organic process that's the markets that's way out of our control. Yeah. Like these guys who live in Hawaii and they spend their whole life chasing swell. Yeah, right. Right. For real. It's, you know, or the ski bums, the guys who, you know, finally make it up to Alaska and have a, you know, a job or in, in British Columbia, you know, guiding for heli, stuff like that. It's right. Chasing flow state, right? Chasing what a, flow state. Yeah, for sure. Right? That's the name of the game. Right. You know, you know what helps too is, um, is although this is an individual sport, I call it a sport. Um, so does David. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, having somebody else to lean on having somebody having others just like this like we're talking right now um about your process like you know david and i have become really good friends and um i trust him and i trust his opinion with everything and he's made me a better trader and influenced me in in positive ways and surrounding yourself with people like that is uh very important but the other thing is you know as a as somebody new, you always have to be able to provide some type of value um, to that other person to have like a really good uh, symbiosis and a good relationship. And Re uh, reciprocity, sorry to interrupt. Reciprocity. Now, um, that's the really important thing because there are so many people out there and even friends of mine that see some success and different things and they want to uh, ask you a bunch of questions and how did you do this and this and that. And, you know, of course I wanna, I want to help people, but, um, you know, you have to have done a lot of work yourself already to show that, um, you know, you deserve this new knowledge and, and um, that you've earned some of it and that you can maybe provide something as well because you've already done your due diligence through studying and, and all of that. And you can provide something, even if it's just a little bit. So uh, for all of the people that are newer traders and stuff that, you know, ask David all of these questions too, you know, on his Friendly Bear podcast and to get into our our little uh, um, chat room stuff that we have and all of that, you know, um, in, in your way there, but, but uh, be able to provide some type of value in a way and not be a, maybe leech is, is a, is a decent term to use. So, you know, I, I ski a lot. Right. And so I have friends that I ride the chair with and in all over, you know, many different ski areas. And, and so it's really easy to have a fun time with friends that you only have a fun time with. Yeah. Right. But the friends that we have, you know, this is battle, you know, where people, there are people who lose everything and we lose friends here. And so that doesn't necessarily happen in a resort or, you know, at a beach town or maybe even on the golf course. I'm not sure. Right. Like you don't lose friends on the, like people come back and play another round, even if they have a bad round. But so I think to your point is that the community that wherever you find your friends um, in this crowd is, is very helpful in, in um, surviving because God knows you can't be perfect and God knows you're always going to be early. And because you're early, you're going to need a thick skin to survive the move against you before it goes your way. And because your spouse partner doesn't understand what that feels like, and we can sympathize with the, I mean, think about it, right? Like, are you early or are you wrong? Okay, that's the first step. Then, okay, I've decided that I'm early and now I'm right. Now, how much of the trade is, you know, as the trade unfolds, like, do I add? Do I take profits? Do I let it go? 
you know, think about that. And there's virtually anybody who just is like, honey, I'm going to play softball at two o'clock on Saturday has no clue the mental process that you face when you have to just do things when the time is right, rather than at a specific time. And how do you teach that? I mean, how do you just tell somebody that that's newer and it's, right? it's very difficult. And then the one thing I'll add, because you had talked about friends and all that, like David, now, how many times, I guess this year, you know, six, six, six and a half months, have you and I, even in our little chat room or whatever, you know, gone at it just a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. I yell it. I yell at Paul. Yeah, you can sense it, too, in the chat. You can right. sense it. Yeah. And I know David <laughs> senses it. And, and you know, David's, got, David's going to keep going with it. And I, I keep going with it. And, and right. uh, too. But right. I learned from all of those. And um yeah, it's when, like, fuck you. No, fuck yeah, you. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. And then, you know, sometimes I cool down and go away for a couple hours. I come back. Right. And, you know, and you're welcome back. And you're welcome back. You know, the only thing that I've learned over the years on the floor is that you should never criticize a person's ability to execute the trade. So if you think he's crazy, you say maybe you should rethink that because you want to be able to leave the person no matter what happens, leave the person with the ego strength to hit the mouse, to make the next shot, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, just say them so politely suggest to them because we all have so much mutual respect because we're all professionals. Right. We've all made it this far. So it's like, OK, I, I'm and essentially I'm sounding out what could be a crazy idea. And you should say maybe you should rethink that if you don't agree, because, again, like we have to leave the person with enough ego strength to hit the mouse. Absolutely. And and like, um. I think what Reed is getting at when we argue and, or like when, when we are having a discourse, I see it as discourse. And Adam, you, we've had Adam on the Misfits too. It's the same thing. Um, with us, I the way I see it is we're, we're getting closer to the truth when we're having this discourse. And I try my best to make it, a, a, on my part at least, to like, because it's a chat. You don't really see the person's emotion through the screen or anything. You're just seeing words being typed. So the way I see those is that we're digging deeper into why a stock is moving, why what what is the catalyst? Did we go through our process to check through? Um, is our is the float accurate? Are the stats accurate that we just gathered? Because um, we're running trades by each other and we trade the same things. So it's like, did you did you miss something on the checklist? Did you see this? What do you think of this catalyst? Is this catalyst bullshit? Is it real? Is it is it is it like? is it irrelevant and like how do you word it instead of just saying like it's irrelevant I, like that's kind of rude so like you don't really want to because you you want to you want to leave an open open ended for discourse right you know? so you can get deeper to see what's going on and that's how we make money you know when we yep. when we get to the truth and to see yep. and to, so we can have better conviction I mean, so like I, essentially are we asking each other what am i missing at times yes pretty much yeah pretty much you know and i think i think we've done that pretty well like you know at at, at times you know when you're getting squeezed it's getting kind of it's kind of frustrating like today um today for example, <laughs> so example uh there was a chinese stock dumping and uh somebody was mentioning it in the chat like a screenshot and uh i didn't see the screenshot and i'm like what what are you talking about? like i was frustrating because i was getting squeezed on another stock and then um I think Reed or someone else said, oh, scroll, scroll up. And I scrolled up. I didn't see it. And then like, I'm, I'm still getting squeezed more I'm on the other stock that I'm in. I'm like, I can't see it. Like, I'm, I'm frustrated. And then uh, Reed finally points out, oh, click it and open it up. And I was like, and I was like, I wanted to type. You should have said to open it up, you know, and like, but, <laughs> but it's like, so, but then I like as a pro trader and like someone that's, that's interested in mindset and all that, I, I realized right away, instant. I was like, that, that is not going to, what's, if I type, you should have told me that that's not going to get me anywhere. What What's the purpose of saying that? It's not going to help me. It's not going to help Reed. So like, I didn't even put that in there, but David three, four years ago would have, would have had an argument right there. I would have been like, why didn't you do this? Come on, man. You know, like I, that's the frustration of getting squeezed and not being able to open something up. So it's like, you know, um, it all goes back to attitude, you know, and like, pausing and seeing what's what is going to help me in this situation is it me panicking more going to help me me calming down more and then also like i don't want to affect reese trading you know what i mean i don't want to my frustration of getting squeezed on my stock to like get through the you know the chat and like he feels 
that I'm being rude to him now. And like, why? And then like that adds an extra layer of stress because maybe he's going through some squeeze. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to bring your stress onto others. And also, so it's like when you're, when you're treating with other people that are, that are serious and that are good, you know, like Reed performs very well and he's trading other accounts and everything. You want to not only check your attitude, but how, how your attitude is going to affect the, the other person. And like, having a good relationship with other traders like I do with Adam and Reed, we understand that about each other very well. And I think also, you know, these days and age, like we have the whole Twitter profiles and like no one really knows who they're talking to. I know in previous chat rooms, I didn't even know what the person looked like or what he, I never knew. Or even was, their name for that. Even matter. their name or anything. Right. Yeah, exactly. So how, it's, it's harder to deal with like that. But with Reed and Adam, I, I've, I've dealt with them in person. Um, we We've, do these zoom calls all the time. Also like we do podcasts together all the time. So I think, you know, it's an extra layer of, uh, of understanding there of, of the person. I think that really helps us as, as a group to tell you the truth. So. Um, yeah, Dave, uh, Reed, I want to ask you a question, but David, that's super gracious and an understanding of how you're, you're not trying to burden other people with our, with a, in reminding everybody listening, try not to, in a trading conversation, burden other people with your trauma because everyone has a limited sort of hard drive capacity for for their own trauma. And then if, if they're affected by yours, which they probably would be because they care about you, you're actually um, not, you may be trying to bleed off some of yours, but you're offloading it onto one of your friends. That's not really a wise thing. My question for Reed is, is that, trading is so messy like is golf as messy as that i mean and how are you with with the fact that i mean like it's it's like messy leads to grit right because you need to be able to fight back from what's not perfect i mean isn't that just sorry philosophical but that's like life in what <laughs> thank you <laughs> right right yes yeah. no you're not you don't have to apologize you, you know, like yeah is, that's life is messy we want to make it we want to get in that flow state we want to make everything as perfect as possible i'm a very structured detail oriented person and when i start getting off my rocker with different things or if somebody cancels the appointments and wants to move stuff um i i start to not you know quite do as well, but I have to kind of embrace the messiness and understand that I can only control certain things, which is me, my attitude, um, all of that. And yeah, it's not a, it's not a perfect world. You can run down the list, right? uh, Golf is um, messy. (laughs) It's messy, I guess, in a way where you can work so hard, you can prepare so hard, you can do everything that you could, you know, ever imagine. And this is for uh, sport, all sports and everything. And, and you just might not have it at the most important moment where you really need it. And that is uh, very discouraging and it's tough. And in golf, there's 150 players every tournament, um, which means the average, you know, golfer is going to win one out of every 150 times. I mean, you're, if you finish top 25, that's great. Top 15, that's great. My fiance is on the uh, Epson tour, which is the second best uh, professional women's tour. That's uh, all throughout the United States. And, uh, you know, if, if she, she hasn't won yet, right? I mean, top 25 is great, but you always leave these, these events. Like, you know, she was near the top and she ended up finishing, I think, T11th a couple of weeks ago. And we left not feeling good and accomplished, even though it was a great finish, 11th out of 156 people. So, that that's very difficult in a sport where you never truly like win you're you you very rarely um win so i guess that's something i would say it's usually discouraging because you could have always done better you could have always done better um so is it is it like we accept the fact that it's not a perfect world that it's i mean like you say it's like life right it's messy right like just accept, I mean, if someone's a perfectionist, right? And, you know, we used to have this thing, this kid wag, Mike Wagner on the floor had a UFI, he called it the ultimate frustration index. Had you sold them better, had you covered perfect, and he kept track of it, right? Like on his trades, like, right? Like, David, do you have a problem with, with oh, perfectionism? He, he was, he's tracking it. Um, yeah. No, actually, um, my, my trades are pretty sloppy if you consider like my entries and my exits. The, the overall thesis of the trades usually work out pretty well for me. 
But, um, you know, it's, it's crazy how you can have good results, but you can still be, you can still be kind of sloppy, you know? And like, I'm working on that every day to improve it. But like, well, who the guy you just mentioned, how, how far was he into trading? If he's trying to, Really? Oh, no, he was in the ring. He was a good trader for sure. No question. But he just did it as a, as you know, as a, as like, if he were to be perfect, this is what he would have made versus what he did make. I see. Um, but you, you know, it's cause like, you're never going to be perfect in this, you know, like you're never going to have the perfect entry. You're never going to have the perfect exit. You know, it's just like, you want, you want a good chunk of it. And uh, you got, you know, it, 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 if you focus on that, um, you'll be all right, you know? So like, for example, when you mentioned the whole golf thing, I was thinking baseball, because I played baseball um, for, for a long time, man. I'm talking about like 20 years, the first 23 years of my life, all that, that's all I did. Um, and baseball, you know, you got the swing and, and, and like, I would take a thousand swings before every night going to bed in front of a mirror. And like, you can perfect it, but it's just like, it's there's still little nuances here and there now comparing it to golf i don't know anything about golf but golf seems much more precise you know you gotta like I, when i look at the golf players taking their swings or practicing or reads uh looking at his uh videos like on, on social media and stuff it's just like it's much more it seems that extra control with golf and maybe that's it, it it uh it reflects on his trading too because like his entries are a lot better than mine. Right, it's less I, I golf mean, is less messy than baseball. Yeah, uh, you know for sure. And like you know, baseball, you you got the other side. You got to play defense and ground balls, diving here, getting dirty, and like it's almost like a dance. It's it's not really perfect. It's just like you're kind of just going with the flow and and doing repetition many times. But um, golf seems much more like a game of really millimeters. And baseball too is a game of millimeters. It's, it's a game of it's centimeters, I guess, <laughs> as opposed to millimeters. But uh, but you know, and I so I don't know. It's like you can always improve it, and that's the thing with training. You always got to be adapting. You always got to be improving. What are you gonna do? Like that's why I still put in a ton of hours. You know, I'm trying to improve that one percent every day. I'm trying, you know, until. Like, I, I don't know how, like, and I, I've noticed this about a lot of successful traders. They reach a certain point and then there's kind of like cruise control from there. And yeah, I, hey, I, don't know. I get it. What are you studying now? I'm studying uh, fundamentals. I'm studying. Uh, I went to that conference with Stephen Ducks. Uh, this guy has made a ton of money short selling. Uh -huh. uh, I've implemented just, a, you know, it's crazy how just a couple of nuggets from someone and you can apply them right away just to consider like, Things like what he does, like float rotation or dollar block, like a certain amount. He he's, has a system where uh, a stock trades a certain amount of dollars. And then it's usually that's about it. You know, it's, it's bearish from there. Float rotation, it, it, it rotates the float a certain amount of times and it's bearish overall from there. So like, and then my understanding now with fundamentals this year, I get to apply the fundamentals of dilution, the, you know, all that combined, you know, and then like, yeah, it's just like constant knowledge, you know. So what what am I working on? I'm working on just under getting squeezed less often, right, <laughs> one right. one way or another, you know. I'm trying to avoid like whatever can get me squeezed. You know, one thing this year and this year it's it's working. It's been working. Uh, right. Last year, I, every month or or two, I would get a really nasty squeeze, maybe once or twice a month. Um, this year same you know I, I i go through some squeezes but they've been occurring a lot less and i think it's because just increasing the process like reed said we had three a criteria of like three last year and now we have a whole list of criteria we understand fundamentals a lot better there's a a, a, a woman uh ali angel she's taught me so much about fundamentals on okay. top on top of the fundamentals that adam taught me I'm trading next to Adam at trade space for, for all, a year, basically. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, when you, when you understand the fundamentals and what's going on uh, internally of the stock, you can kind of, you can see the potential in a squeeze or understand, okay, let me lay off the gas here. Instead of adding into the squeeze, I just lay off the gas and then maybe start, start to think of playing defense or cutting it all together. So it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a constant 
just working on everything and, and mindset. There's just not enough mindset stuff you can work on. Cause like when you have a red day, it's tough, man. When, when you, like I go for a walk or whatever. I listen to the audio book, but like, you know, you just got to get yourself. Like today I took a loss on a trade. I, saw, I was swinging and I saw it, it's good having friends that, that are like-minded too. Cause like Reed was like, Hey, not onto the next one. You know, it's right. always good. Right. It's, we need, yeah. we need more of Reed. Yeah, <laughs> we need we need it. So it's it's good to hear that from someone else. Like I I know it for myself, but when you hear it, it's like all right. Yeah, uh, my my friend agrees with me. Like let's move on. Boom. And then like, it's crazy how you forget about these stocks. Like in a week or two, you forget it all. It ever even happened. Right. You know. So it's it's gone to that point where controlling the squeeze, controlling the loss, uh, expanding your knowledge mindset, so you can come in. A, I, I used to take a couple of days off. Or even go on vacation after a loss, you know, or like a couple of years ago, I would have, I had a really good 2020 and then I had like a red month and it was, it was and I was like, I'm, I was questioning myself, just like, like what traders we always do. Mm-hmm. So like, what, and I, I've seen, I've heard that like really successful traders having losses and then questioning themselves. And like, as an outsider or someone that looks up to that trader, you're like, why would they question themselves? And then you go through it and you're like, you know, I understand why. So it's a constant internal battle you know so you know it's, it's like constantly improving in that category like what do you need to improve in that category you know so uh for me it's it, yeah it's always going through the, the audio books going through the positive mindset journaling going through like a diary i have this like I, I journal a lot i you know and uh going through that process of your emotion in the trade and like why and digging deep into why you were why were you oversized why, you know, were you oversized because you're trying to make up for a loss too fast? Is it, are you insecure about like what your someone thinks of you and then like you want to prove them wrong or like how, and like that could be a good thing, but like you, it's got to be controlled. It can't just be this, this monster that just wants to oversize and prove something to, to hey, someone else. Hey, you're great friends with Reed. Where does he need to improve? Reed, uh, let's see. Just, oh, um, Patience on the winners, you know, um, he has a really good entries and, you know, we talk about this quite a bit and it's, it's a uh, very good entries, the best entries. And then he, uh, he, he gets the wins three to 5%. He takes it. But sometimes with the, with the overall thesis we have of the stock, like we, we, are, we discuss the trades a lot. We're like, okay. Um, the, it has dilution. The catalyst is, is BS. Um, it's, it's, it's got a ton of resistance on the daily. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, all, all types of stuff. Yeah. And but he it's, takes it, he takes right, it off. Right. I mean, and, and so read equal time. Where does David need to be better? So um, I'm just going to say this, first of all, by the way, that in self-defense, now, of course, right. No, I'm, no, I have, I have your problem, no, no, by I, the way, I, I get no, out no, too early. Two, two things is one, I value David's opinion, probably of any trader, uh, the most and he is 100% right and also and he'll probably know this like why do I take those wins and stuff well it's structured it's who I am as a person I want to keep everything there so I just want to guarantee it right I have mm-hmm. to get away from that I have to adapt as a person I got to get better at um, letting those those run and David you know, I got to make sure I'm covering morning of day two because my only two big losses this entire year I didn't listen to my rules right man so uh, we know that. And then for David, what does David need to get better at? David is killing it this year overall. And um, Dave, you know, he's a little bit of a stubborn short seller at the end of the day. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I, 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 I know a few of them. Paul, Paul, my friend Paul Hornblower as well. Very stubborn. He is so right. And he's 100% right. And you just got to make sure sometimes that you're thinking of what are all the Momo quote unquote, degenerates thinking on the exact same trade right now. And um, that's why I wait sometimes on my entries because I know David has all this perfect fundamental, everything oh, lines up. Right, right, right. Mean I'm just going to get in. It means right. that I am going to wait still. Perfect. And yeah. I miss some plays sometimes, um, but David could have better averages. And I mean, he always pretty much wins them anyways, but maybe he could make, you know, two, three, four, five percent more on those wins. I've um, been I've been to, just to help with trying to hold on to winners, you know, when you it's like, oh, you know, I've got 
if I'm counter trend trading, I've got a, you know, five handles in the S and P or something against it. And I, and I think to myself, could that have been the top? The only argument I can come up with is as long after, you know, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to sit here anyway, all day. I might as well sit here with a winning position on. Maybe you could try that, you know, just say to yourself, you know, if I cover, what am I going to do? I'm going to be sitting here without a position. You know who says that? David. Oh, he does. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I don't, there's nothing else going on in the markets. I think this is going to probably fade by the end of the day, but what else am I doing? I'll cover a quarter and I'll let the little glass well, three fourths. Right. Me. Right. And, and honestly, most of the time it fades another 10%. And, and, and the, and of course, right. There's always Murphy's law. So, yeah. right. I, I don't want to fuck with your structure at all there. That's well, it. you know, th this is, this is good to hear, you know, that's why I like, I like doing these podcasts and stuff. I always get something really good out of it. And like, it holds me accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like the podcast that I've done for on my podcast has just been, it's improved my trading uh, a thousand percent, you know? Right. So, Let's uh, well, Reed has helped us a lot. Thank you, Reed. That's been just really nice to know. Absolutely. Really fucking solid. Really, uh, really fun. Um, getting on with you guys. That's, that's for sure. This is good. I love these discussions as well. And, um, I like, I, I really like learning a lot. I'm, I'm big into learning and being around you guys and, and people in the chat room. And, um, I ask a lot of questions. I really do. And it's not that I don't think I always, you know, know the answer. I just want to know what everyone else is thinking so that we can all brainstorm together and find a common goal and solution. That's what David and I do. So that's what we're so, doing. So yeah, the first thing, the first rule in trading is that we don't know anything. So it was referred back to the first rule. And then the, the second thing would be that on my first day on the floor of the big board in 1980 was that they said to me, there is no dumb question, but you just can't ask the same question twice. Wow, good. Okay. That's good stuff. Isn't that good stuff? All right, you guys. Um, it's been an hour. We can't. We can't be too. You know, we've asked people for an hour of their time. But everybody, thank you for coming. And and Reed, nice to meet you. And David, of course, it's great to see you. Likewise, good to be back, man. Yeah, you guys. And um, you know, try and bleed off the trauma. Reed, that's great about being able to just understand. We have to get on with it, right? Just get on with it. Your support system around you helps with that too, who you're surrounded with. So. Right. Absolutely, yeah. 100 percent Gents. Thanks. Thanks, man. All right, guys. Good. I'll see you later. Yeah. See you later.